This is the plaintiff, Vincent Ford. He says the defendant got into a car crash, ran into a fence, knocked it over, and it fell on his parked car. His poor car was completely destroyed. The defendant has some low-grade insurance company. They only paid a small amount of the car's total value. And he's here suing for the $4,000 he still owed. This is the defendant, Michael Flournoy. He says his gas pedal got stuck in place, and he ran a stop sign and hit a canopy and a fence and is lucky to be alive. The plaintiff's a crook who's claiming his car was in harm's way and it got totaled. That's right, his car was nowhere in sight of the accident. He's an opportunist trying to rip him off, and he thinks the judge will see right through his bogus story. He's accused of not paying enough. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff says the defendant crashed his car through the plaintiff's fence and into his shed. But the defendant says his gas pedal got stuck, and that's how he hit the fence. It's the case of please fence me in. All right, Vincent Ford, you are suing Michael Flournoy mm -hmm. for $4,000 for the diminished value of your car that he very spectacularly crashed into. Tell me what's going on. Um, hey, Judge. I, um, I received the call at 7 o'clock p.m. on November 2nd. Um, by my brother and told me that my car was um, wrecked. How did your and, brother know? Uh, he was actually at the car wash. He had his, so he your owns, brother owns a car wash? He owns the car wash. All right. the and the car shop. wash, is it a physical building or is it just like the shed? A sh what is it? He has a physical building behind it. He has a gazebo and he has a, um, it's right. behind a fence. And your car was where? Behind the fence on the inside of the property. Inside of the property. And your brother calls you to tell you what? That my car was damaged. How? And he didn't just say that, hey, your car's damaged. That's yeah, not so, what he some said. Guy, he said some guy ran the stop sign and knocked down the fence, and he knocked down the gazebo, and everything is tore up. Right. And so I needed to come right away. And what happened? Well, I, was, I just got off from work, so I wanted to get me something to eat. I was coming back. When I got almost to the corner, when I went to push my brakes, it, the car wouldn't stop. It just what kind of car was it? A, a, for, a Toyota 4Runner. Okay, and how is this intersection? Is it? Is it? Um, it's straight ahead. It's straight ahead. So it's like a mm -hmm. T. It's, it's like straight ahead. Mm -hmm. So it's a T. Mm -hmm. So you literally just kept driving right just, into the I car wash. Kept trying to push on the brakes, and then I push on the brakes, it just kept going faster. Well, let's look at the damage because um, this is quite the thing. Actually, your brother had the presence of mind to take a video, correct? I actually took the video. Oh, you were the one who took the video? Yes. When I arrived on the scene, uh, I just couldn't believe it. It was thing was just tore up. That's me car. talking. Yeah, can you be quiet so I can hear you? <laughs> Told Dara shop. Oh, that's the car right there. <laughs> Is that white car yours? That's mine, yes ma'am. Is that the Mazda? That's the Mazda, man. yes. This car is total damage. See him? No, I said his car is Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those are all the scratch marks? Yes. From judge. what, the fence, I guess? From the fence, yes, Judge. Scratches everywhere. So that's what we got. Now, it, it, thank goodness you weren't hurt because yeah. people have, you know, can get really hurt in some way. Did your airbag go off? Airbag didn't go off. Okay, so what happens? What kind of insurance did you have? You're from Florida. So uh, I had $10,000 worth of insurance. You had the minimum PIP. All right. Mm -hmm. So your brother made a claim, obviously, and they paid your brother... I'm sorry, Judge. It's actually the owner of the property. My brother leases the property from the owner. Oh, okay. So, so but and was that edifice? Did that belong to your brother? The the no. the gazebo? No, the, no. Oh, the owner. okay. So, the so the the pro owner of the property made the claim. Yes. And most of that money went to the owner of the property. Yes. But his insurance then paid you what amount? Twenty-two hundred dollars. All right. And you feel that that was woefully inadequate because? Because my car is worth more than that. What is your car worth? 5500 at least. How are you going to prove that to me? Because the blue book value of your car is not 5500 Yes. I, I Go ahead. Raise. That's okay. And did you repair the car? No, I did not. You I ended up getting rid of the car? Yes, I did. And when you it. sold it, you sold it for how much? $2,000. Okay. So you have a car that is damaged on day one. And on a subsequent day, you have $4,200 in your pocket because you didn't use the $2,200 to fix it. And even damage, you got an additional $2,000 for it. So there's $4,200 on your side. 
Um, I know you don't want to look at it that way because you make more money if I don't. No. But you understand that you are limited. What year car is this? It's a 06 Mazda 6 06 Grand Sport. Mazda. Okay. Oh, Grand Sport. I don't yes. know how you diminish the value of an 06 Mazda. It is already, I mean, you know, I, I'm sure that it's a, it was a great car to you and you're very happy with it. How long did you have it? No, I'm, a, I'm actually a dealer. Josh. Oh, you're a dealer? I'm a dealer. Oh, well, never mind about so, all that so, fuzzy stuff. So, um, and uh, so, a 2006 so, Mazda, what'd you pay for it? <laughs> Uh, I, can't I, say. I, I know you're here to make me. You, listen, you got to eat. That's how a dealer makes money. I understand exactly. it. But what did you pay for it? Um, fifteen hundred. And you bought it at an auction or from a person? Auction. That's what dealers buy, okay. buy most of the cars. All right. Yes. And um, and you're trying to persuade me that I mean, definitely he's at fault. There's no question. You're dead at fault. Did you want to say something about that? No, I'm, I'm fine. So if a gas pedal gets stuck, are you responsible if you hit another car? You are. You still have partial control. Uh, you still you have partial responsibility because you still have control over the car. Fair enough. What do you say? I say yes, unless you can prove a cross defendant is involved, which would be the manufacturer of the car. Why on earth would you do that? Well, if the pedal got stuck, then it could be a manufacturer's problem. But you got to prove that. Until then, it's on you. Okay. Well, suppose you didn't bring that person into court. What do you do? It's on you. So you're responsible even if the pedal gets stuck. Well, like I said, the burden's on you to prove that... They... What if I didn't do anything wrong and the, pe the pedal just got stuck and the gas didn't go? It's the responsibility of the driver. Figure your license is for. you got to be responsible. But I didn't drive it. The dr car was driving itself. I don't understand what you're saying. Oh, I thought we were in the car. We aren't in the car. You're in the car. <laughs> I'm in the car. You're not in the car. Why are you so te petrified? I can't do this. <laughs> Going inside the courtroom. What I want to say, Judge, is the insurance offered me $2,200. Now, that was so, inadequate. I agree. Right. So what I, I declined that. So I only got $2,000 from what I sold the vehicle. I didn't get the $2,200 Oh, you never yet. got the $2,200 no, from... because if I would have accepted it, then they would have saying that, Asked okay... Asked you to sign. Some insurance companies right. do and some don't, but right. so they I, all so, should. So the only thing I all got... Right, so is, is that accurate? Did he ever collect any money from the insurance? I don't I, I don't know. They know I never find out. Well, they should always be sending you a letter. They sent me nothing. I have the, um, Why did you say in your um, complaint, since the max they pay out is ten grand, they gave me the remainder of twenty two hundred for my car damages? Um, because they gave the the other. Um, did you or did you not get twenty two hundred? Because if I find out you're lying about that, I'm gonna. I can't tell you. I'm like the police. You make me run. We're gonna have a problem. So we're gonna try this one more time. I got this from you and your statement. Mm -hmm. Did you or did you not get twenty two hundred from the insurance company? I did not. Okay. No, I declined it. Here's, here's the form that they sent me. Okay. And, uh, and I did not sign it. I did not send it to them. All right. So you sell the car for 2000 Do you have proof of the bill of sale from the car? Oh, yeah. Okay. Why don't you bring it up? I, all right. Here we go. Look how fast that happened. Two thousand one hundred and forty-eight, and then um, you're now suing him for four thousand because you feel the car was worth six thousand one hundred and forty-eight sixty-one. Right. All right. How are you proving that? How are you proving the car was because not even your well, proof says. Well, fifty-five hundred. Well, which is well, it? Fifty five hundred well, six thousand one hundred and forty eight. Initially, like Judge, I was suing for thirty nine hundred, which is the amount okay, of the damages. Do you damages. have any pictures of the car before this? Um, we know you bought it for fifteen hundred. Yes, Judge. So, what if any work did you do to it that would have converted it from, you know, a car that a dealer can buy for fifteen hundred? I understand you're the guy who gets to go to the auction, to a car that a dealer can sell for six thousand. Tell me what you did to that car. Well, I not a darn thing, did you? Yes, I did. I actually put um, wheels on it. I put some rims on it, and I put... Um, Perfect. Can you show me proof that you put windows. wheels, rims, and whatever else you just said? Well, I, can't, I can't prove that. Okay, uh, well, that's here's, kind here's, of... I've, look, 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 look. You're the one who came to court to... And, and actually, what you called it was diminished value, but the thought of suing for diminished value on a 2006 car must have occurred to you that that's not a great idea. So now you're calling it the money I put into the car. How would you think that I'm not going to ask you to prove the money you put into the car? It's, of course, what I'm going to ask you. Right, right. All right. Show me, um, you have insurance in your name for this Mazda, right? Yes. Well, not my name, but my, my business name. My your business, business name. Business insurance. All right. Well, the, my insurance, I have minimum coverage, so that's why my, my insurance doesn't cover the damage because I also have minimum coverage. My, Did you receive any money from your insurance? No, I wouldn't because I have All right, I have and then coverage. this right here is a picture of the Mazda where? That's actually at my house. And these pictures were taken when? 
Um, when I dress it up, when I buy the vehicle and I fix it up and, you know, ready to sell. Did you advertise that vehicle? Uh, no, not, no. No, don't judge. All right, so you did not accept the insurance money. The only money you were able to sell it for was $2,000. Based on that and just what is the private party sale, which is all you would be entitled, were you arguing that you would be entitled to more than private party sale? Y yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm a dealer. So Yeah, but I, you didn't so have any overhead on getting paid on this. Like, in other words, the concept behind what you would have made as a dealer, which, by the way, you didn't bring me um, the proof of your license for that, but let's assume that you are. Um, the, the profit margin on that includes what your overhead in attempting to sell this, so that doesn't get into account. What the law looks at is, hey, this got damaged. What was that worth at that very moment? Because we're going to pay you. Okay. So um, I find that the private party value in good condition. What was your car doing at your brother's car wash? It's detailed, getting detailed. Detail work. In good condition, which I'm going to assume it was in, I'm not going to take into account that you only pay 1500 for it because I agree you're supposed to be able to make money. But not only that, Judge, I, I, make, I have to fix it, you know. Yeah, even but you though, didn't even, fix it. You sold it without fixing it. No, 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 no. no. Once you buy the vehicle, you, you repair the vehicle. No, no. I, did you... F I, no, I understand that, all right? I'm looking... I am putting a value on your Mazda the minute he hit it. And the minute he hit it, regardless of what you're able to prove you put into it, I'm not going to make you prove you, you I'm just going to, I'm, I'm going to assess it at the private party value. I'm assuming that you did something to it to be able to sell it like that because you got it at an auction. So God knows what condition you got it in and you only pay $1,500 for it. I don't hold that against you. I'm going to assume that what he did was hit a car worth the private party value, which is 4300 you received only 2000 for it because it was all beat up after this accident. So what is required to make you whole is $2,300, and that is what I am going to order him to pay you, verdict for the plaintiff, and the amount of $2,300. So the plaintiff prevails after a lot of testing. He gets $2,300. You didn't have much to say in this whole trial, no, Mr. Floor and I. Step back here a little bit. What, I'm, what do you think about all this? Crazy. Just crazy. crazy. It's okay. Listen, let me ask you a question. What finally stopped the car? When I, when I finally stopped, when I cut it off. No, but I mean, you were speeding through. You're going I'm, over the, you know, all that stuff. I'm done, sweetie. Thank you're you. You're done? Yeah, I'm sweetie, done. Sweetie, you're going the wrong way. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's that way. <laughs> all right, Mr. Ford. You know, this is interesting. You got a judgment for $2,300. The insurance was ready to give you $2,200, but right. you turned them down, right. and then you had to go through court to do all this. You think it would have been better to take the insurance? No, it was, it was worth the try. I was mean, it, I, but I think it, it wasn't. I, I mean, it wasn't you were a, getting a good test from the judge, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, it wasn't a just verdict. Though. Yeah, I mean, she, she grilled you. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. I know. She, she's tough. All right, well, twenty three hundred. That's that's better than nothing. All right, you made a hundred bucks. Put it that way, okay? Thanks. All right, very good. <laughs> Harvey. Okay, here's the pisser. He's right. Um, it is the defendant's job to prove that it was a mechanical problem. The defendant couldn't prove it, and that's why the defendant loses the case.